Hello and welcome to the Women in Marketing and PR Summit presented by Colors and brought in by SheThePeople.tv. We're delighted to be bringing subjects that are of importance to bring a gender lens to the world that we live in today. Uh, at She the People, as we try and bring you more and more diverse voices and also cover many more interesting subjects, this summit is aiming to bring a gendered lens to many issues around women. To begin with, one, how important is uh, the women market, the female market for marketers today. How large a revenue pie are we talking about? On the other hand, the kind of work being done by women marketers at brands, how are they changing the narrative? That and much more through the day are the women in marketing and PR uh, summit here at She the People. My focus today on this session is going to be on influencer marketing. It has clearly become a very, very critical part of any brand's journey. Uh, to try and understand how influencer marketing connects brands to audiences, I've got three special guests. I've got a Vero who runs a community out of Mexico uh, called Girls Geek, Geek Girls Mex. And then she's got uh, Aparna who runs uh, My Golden Balloon. Uh, she has, of course, been seen in Indian matchmaking in the past and since then become an influencer of brands. Ankita Bansal is an entrepreneur and an influencer, founder of There. So as we look at some of the big trends, uh, we try and understand what is shaping our world today when it comes to influencer marketing. I'll actually put up that first question to Aparna. Aparna, what is it that you're looking at uh, and the reasons for an influencer being important in today's world? Huge um, part of the way our in of the industry is growing, and that's everything from fashion to lifestyle. Um, I'm seeing people buy their pots and pans and um, their uh, eyeglasses and their makeup, all from the influencers that they trust. And it's become a big um, a way of understanding the products that we want. Someone else is reviewing them. Someone else is displaying them for us in a picture. They're telling us about sizing or consistency of a product for our skin. I think it's so much more than us even not being able to go to a store. It's about us not being able to gauge what we see an expert um, gauging from the same product that we want to use or will be using. It's true. In fact, in many ways, um, the kind of an, uh, the kind of role influencers are playing today, uh, which are, of course, in other words, for experts or exp experts in the making, uh, is that they are able to talk much more about the product in a way that, uh, let's say, an ad doesn't. It also helps make connection rather than being a one-sided relationship. Uh, Ankita Bansal, your take on the power of the influencer. Yeah, and I, I mean, when you say I'm seen as an influencer. I think influencer is an extremely huge word with great responsibility and uh, it requires a lot of thought uh, and compassion to be an influencer. Um, you just can't be saying things for the heck of saying it because you know people are following you. Those things need to have meaning. Those things need to make a difference in other people's lives as well. Uh, as for brands, uh, when it comes to influencing, if you real for me personally, I tend to work or I tend to talk about brands I truly believe in, whose stories actually touch my heart. I tend to talk about those brands a little more on my portal, on my platform than other ones, because then I feel my communication also comes from the heart. Uh, to give an example, um, I try and test out these methods on my social media. So when I actually end up writing a caption that comes straight from my heart, it translates into so much more traction on my social media, vis-a-vis -vis me just talking about a product which I'm trying to promote. I feel like your audience somehow just sees through what's coming from your heart and what's not coming from your heart. And you just need to know that it's not about the money that you are garnering out of that proposition or that um, collaboration, but it's also what value are you adding to other people's life or to that brand's uh, life or that brand's status in the, in the market when you truly believe in it, when you truly understand what they're doing and what they're about. So I think that's a very important point because I think um, the importance of that responsibility factor is critical. That takes me to how influencer marketing can be absolutely uh, phenomenal when it comes to social impact. Uh, and I'll uh, introduce uh, Veronica here from uh, Mexico, who has a community that is impacting the way uh, people look at their brands or products or technology in specific. Uh, Vero, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, your take on how influencer marketing shapes social impact. 
Thank you for inviting us, for inviting, I, I say us because we're a, a community with Geek Girls MX and I'm very happy to be here. Well, about influencers. So I find that there are like two different kinds of them. One is like, as you said, in fashion and cosmetics where people normally turn to see how many followers are with this influencers, right? And so they decide to, to work with them. But in our case, like for example, in social enterprises like Geek Girls MX itself, it's more about the years you've been out there and how you've been communicating with all the people that are following you. So I feel like it's a different way of working with this type of inferentials. Why? Because it's more about confidence. It's about the community that's actually following the committee or the, I don't know, founder and co-founder have speak, they have spoken to them. They have worked with them and they believe in what their philosophy is about or what's driving them to make changes in their community. So I would say that um, if you look into influencers inside of social impact, it's way uh, bigger impact for, for whatever you want to do with them because people know their work and they believe in them. Aparna, what is your take on this whole power, responsibility, and impact piece around the influencer? I was given this um, role kind of unexpectedly, and I think that there is a huge distinction between people who were given it through a celebrity kind of route um, and people who built their following slowly and steadily over a period of six to 10 years to get to the same number of followers that I have today. So for me, the learning curve was very steep, and I think... Um, there's a lot of things I didn't know about what what it meant to have this platform and to have this access to people and to have them hear my voice. Um, for me, it's very important to stay authentic to my voice and I do sometimes lose people if I speak up um, about my political views or my take on feminism or misogyny or um, reality TV or the way that we consume media in general. Some people don't like that. Um, but the thing about Instagram, which is the platform I use the most, is that there's room for everyone, really. Like everybody can spew whatever nonsense or, or good stuff or bad stuff out there and they'll find a following. And so for me, I just want to stay true to myself and not worry about those numbers. Um, that's not ever what I wanted to create for people who are constantly trying to grow their numbers and trying to grow their influence and are creating content and thinking about their, their marketing and their niches. I'm, I'm not that person. I don't I'm not marketing anything. I'm a person who happened to be on a show that now people want to occasionally watch further off the show. <laughs> yeah, I get that. But I think something that you said really hit a spot, which is that, you know, when you talk about certain things, you lose followers. When you talk about some other things, then you gain followers. In this whole process, where does ethics fit in, Aparna? Definitely, because I think that there is a strange relationship that, um, we are all aware of, but maybe sometimes gloss over. And it's it's this sponsored ad. It's the ad. It's the uh, someone's getting paid to sell you this product. Do you really trust them? Um, what is trust? Is it just a, a preconceived notion of oh, you like that person that you're following, so you trust them? Um, I think that there's there's this gray space of of us wanting to think these influencers are our best friend who's in, you know influencing us to buy a product or a service or a um, a lifestyle even. Um, but what do we really know? I mean, the filter of social media is one that is very nuanced and, and very um, created. Um, and it can be created in any way that, um, you know, we as a consumer of it cannot control that creation. I think those are good points there. Ankita, I'd like to know your thoughts about how the trust factor matters when it comes to the influencer and brand. Yeah. Um... Again, it, I think it boils down to are you looking at a monetary benefit only for yourself or are you looking at making a true difference to the brand you're working for and with? Uh, and that applies to the brand as well. Uh, how I look at this is as a brand owner, uh, and I tell Gayatri the same thing multiple number of times also, I may want to work with somebody whose thoughts and values align with what we're trying to build with the brand. They may not get us that kind of influx of money at that moment, but in the longer run, 
their presence or their uh, you know their 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 conversation with our brand will be able to help us build a community of like minded people who will truly believe in our product then and they're not coming to us because you know because you're famous but they're actually coming to us because we bring quality to you there's an interesting perspective there from uh, ankita because she comes from both sides of the spectrum as an individual she's an influencer as a company they hire others as well to engage with and represent the brand and take their voice and product out there uh, vero uh, let's look at the aspects that you are looking at in terms of um, just a community all these years we've talked about individual influencers and you know singular instagram accounts etc but today the power of communities is more powerful than anything else uh, people want to engage with communities how has it been for you well what's happening there in the community is that for example there's a lot of um, startups so one of the things that we normally do is like not too long ago we we started our podcast which is called tg podcast why because before all this pandemic situation we would have our meetup and in our meetup the girls would meet and they would talk and exchange uh, business cards and and try to look for whatever material or service to you know to work with and this was like great exposure and and co-working at the end but now we can't meet because it's dangerous so we were like what are we going to do cuz we're we're not going to we're not going to have the same impact we used to have before so that's when we thought about the podcast and what we do is that we talk about all the girls that are doing something and we we are using gig girls and mix name so people like still trust the brand and they give like this chance to listen to this girl that maybe no, nobody knows but she's doing something like terrific right so this is the idea we want to drive traffic maybe it's not in this moment money but at the end it could be because maybe the right person is going to listen to this podcast and and then then they're going to find like all the links to their to this girl's um project and they'll end up connecting at the end right yeah no absolutely i think that really is very relevant but a sub question from what you were saying comes um to me that you know when we look at a specific community or a focused area brands have become extremely smart about this and rightly so and high time that they do not want an influencer for the sake of influence they want to be specific to a kind of sphere of influence they're looking at what has been your experience as a group of tech women who are impacting change and as well as having a voice in your region why well, because uh their work everybody can access to it they can see it because there's always content being created created and being shared through all social networks or even their own website right the other thing is that they they end up uh, pulling like a certain um type of a, a people so if a brand needs i don't know like for example with uh gig girls so if they're looking for women that are starting up their business that are tech lovers and um i don't know that they they run from i don't know from 20 years to maybe 40 40 years old you know they're going to find these girls right there and and gig girls right and in mexico and maybe in the city guadalajara no so there's like like this is like the easiest way to access to a very specific market yeah so that's like the very interesting part the thing is I, the only thing is that brands should know that um what important thing is that their philosophy should like align with the community's philosophy because this trust they have gained through these these years could be lost if they end up working with a brand that it is doesn't really think the way the community does that's a good point and it's very important that brands and the community are aligned on the same uh, you know benchmark in terms of quality ethics what they want to talk about because uh, influence for the sake of influence can totally backfire and i think that is the point why we are seeing such a complete shift in trends aparna what trends are you watching out for in the days ahead trend really towards this um what is it the hashtag that's going viral real not perfect 
Um, it's about authenticity. It's about coming um, on there to speak to your followers like they're your friend, uh, talking to them without your makeup on, without your filter on, showing them your good days and your bad days. Um, I think it's actually really difficult for the person who's creating content. There's a lot of pressure on them to, um, to kind of now expose a lot more parts of their life that perhaps they could have kept hidden before or kept to themselves before, even if it wasn't active hiding. Um, and so I think that it's a very, um, yeah, it's a very, it's a, it's a real movement. I can see why it's popular, but it also takes away a lot of privacy, um, even in the smallest parts from the content creator. I think that is a good point. It does. I'm going to come back to you on a question on privacy, but I would do want to bring Vero back in. Vero, what um, both you and Aparna and Ankita have also been talking about is the fact that there has to be authenticity and there has to be a, some amount of alignment between what brands are doing and how influencers are taking their story forward. That said. When you look at businesses, businesses inherently should not be looking at influencing until they have first got their act together. That itself is a very important piece of the puzzle. Influencer, the influencer is going to save my world. I mean, I do have something to offer as well. And the thing, what we do is an exchange, right? So we're going to talk more about your, your job and you're going to talk about us. And for me, this is like a win-win exchange. So basically it's that you have to look into what they're doing if they think like you as well. And, um, and I, I find ambassadors are also like role models for other women. So it really has to be a good story to tell. And a lot of time people just think like all these girls that are very successful at this moment and they look like they really have everything solved. They, they, Sometimes think that they never went through these phases. And this is why you need to find girls that are successful, but that they did this, all, all this uh, path of fearness and, and got through it. And maybe don't need a bit scared, but they're there doing it. They are there doing it. You're right. I know we got a little bit of an audio glitch there, but. Um... I think I get your point. It's, it's it's pretty relevant that you got to remember that people have built their brands, they build businesses, and that it's not like you can go to an influencer and that will answer all your questions or answer all your issues when it comes to being an existing uh, business. What is much needed is that your business stands for what it is, and uh, you know be in place before it goes out to approach other influencers. So excellent points there, Vero. I'll give the final question to Aparna. Aparna. You were talking about privacy scrutiny so much of that has come into our lives. Um, how does that impact an influencer? I think, um, again, as people grow, they get the chance to slowly understand their own boundaries and their own um, feelings about social media. They also have a drive to have this presence um, that is lacking pretty much in me. I, I don't have a strong drive. Um, I'm not creating content every day. I'm not going to transition from a pantsuit to a jumpsuit for you with some bop of my head. I, I can't do it. I, I, I actually physically probably couldn't do it. I tried to do one for a sponsored ad and it was so difficult. I had so much respect for mainly these women who are, who are creating this content, but that's just not me. I mean, I, I just have to remember that this was happenstance that this happened to me, that I was given this platform. I started with 600 friends on a private setting a week before the show came out, changed my name uh, to my handle to my full name and opened up my account and then the show launched. And so for me, it's not a traditional route. I don't call myself an influencer. I do, I guess, influence people, but I am not an influencer. Aparna, I like I know like that you like to believe so, but thanks so much. I know it's been a very interesting journey for each one of you. And that was our aim to not bring you the usual influencer, but also kind of take you through the journey of what it takes to become one. And those who are still grappling with why they're there and what brands will do with them and vice versa, which brands they would choose. Now, as we look at these trends, I think a couple of them are definitely here to stay. One is that there has to be authenticity and trust between the brand and the influencer. And as far as influencers go, they need to put themselves a big question mark on ethics and what they're going to make choices with rather than becoming another sort of a noisy influencer who goes out there and just with a show of followers is uh, sort of uh, endorsing brands. People will eventually uh, judge you for the choices that you are making. Thanks very much, everyone, for joining us here on the influencer uh, piece of the marketing and PR summit. But stay tuned through the day. There's plenty lined up for each one of you to watch out for as we bring you different voices from across the world.